And we'll start with roll call. Uh, Emma? Hello. Hello. Linda? Here. Um, and Rodney, we'll see if he joins us. Councillor Dubs? Here. Kathy? Here. And Marilyn, Keith, you said, is not able to make it today. All right. So um, are there any public comments today? Uh, sure, if I may. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Hi. I'm, I'm working on buttons here. Let's see what we get. That okay. looks promising. Okay. Well, so I'll keep it very short. I'm sure uh, that's appreciated. <laughs> um, so this is the first time I've uh, attended this meeting, and I'm glad to see that right members of the public can attend. So my name is Rob Evely, and I've been working with digital accessibility for over 20 years in higher education. And it's just, there's big news. In my narrow world of accessibility is, is digital accessibility. We had big news April 24th, and I'm just not sure who all knows about it, but I'll just, I'm going to paraphrase somewhat the first sentence from the Federal Register, dated April 24th. And unless you all know about this, is this news or not news? I think it's news, please proceed. Okay, the Department of Federal, Department of Justice issued its final rule revising the regulation implementing Title II of the ADA to establish specific requirements, including the adoption of specific technical standards for making accessible, I'm going to paraphrase, um, things available through the web and mobile apps. So this has been a, in a long time coming, um, the idea That's that it. the ADA specifically have regs that adopt standards and help folks understand what it means to have accessible digital information. So I just wanted to share the news. If it's not already on there, I didn't see it on the agenda, and it's 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 important for a lot of reasons, but I think it's also worth noting that there's a deadline for uh, government entities in uh, two years and three years to meet the standards. You know, it, it's long, it's 77 pages, and it references the standards, which are even longer than that. So, <laughs> um, but I, you know, I know there's already been some work done on uh, web accessibility, but I figured this was just a kind of landmark. So uh, yeah, that's enough time for me. Sorry, I, I realize again that I got to respect. You know, I, you know, I, I could go on and on, but but I won't. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing that with us. Um, my uh, husband works in higher ed, and I hadn't um, gotten that information yet. So I appreciate knowing that that that's uh, okay. I mean, importantly, it is well. I, I, so it's important to know it affects the town of Northampton, <laughs> the, yes. you know, it, it, it's the state and, and government entities. It does affect UMass. It, it's not specific to the private local colleges, though it looks as though it's completely paired with Section 504, which usually does pair with uh, the private colleges. So, uh, so it is important in higher ed and has been for a while. It really is just making it clear um, that one can't there's, you know, that, that it, it, it's very clear now. There's standards, so. And and so um, it is for government entities specifically it, are called out in the? Correct, which is Title, title II, II is, yeah. is government, yeah, specifically. I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, great. And it even says based, I don't know how big Northampton is. If you're bigger than 50,000, you've got two years. If you're smaller than 50,000, you've got three years to meet the standard. But you shouldn't, I'm not an attorney. So there's a lot more to it as far as um, exceptions and what it means to meet the standards. There's a lot more to it. For example, whether a site is password protected or not, certainly whether certain information is archived or not, these are all important things about um, what, is being required to be accessible according to these regs. So. Great, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Rob? It sounds like lots of nitty gritty detail if we were to go and read. It, it, it's challenging stuff, and but I know that you've already started work on it, so that's great. Um, 
And so, you know, maybe things are fine, but it really does kind of put a marker with this deadline. But you kind of need a roadmap, I would feel. You, yeah, I would I would recommend you have a roadmap. <laughs> too, yeah. So. yeah. Okay, that's great. great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Keith, I imagine that's something you're uh, going to be following up on as ADA coordinator. Yeah, I did get it and I actually wrote to them about the accessibility of the document that they sent it out in because you cannot, it's a locked PDF, which tiny little text. And just to put it into, for my eyes, uh, I had to do some finagling just to read it. Uh, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't got into the nitty gritty of it. Great. Thank you, Rob, for, for joining and sharing that with us. Um, approval. Oh, hi, Rodney. Welcome. Um, so we're, we'll go to the approval of the minutes from April 9th. Um, so Keith sent those out. So I'm assuming everyone has looked over the meetings from our, the, the minutes from our last meeting. So um, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Black can bid. Thank you. Um, any comments or concerns or questions about the minutes before we do a roll call vote? All right, so Emma? Yes. And Linda? I saw your mouth. We can't hear you, but I saw your mouth move. Yes, Linda. Could you still unmute? I, you, you, know, you know what? Did your, uh, my, the Zoom froze. Did that happen? It didn't happen to me. Oh, OK. It looks like okay. the, you're you're freezing up a little bit on on our end, or at least on on my end, at least. Yeah, a tiny bit. Yeah. Hopefully, okay. I say okay. Okay, great, thanks. Awesome. Rodney. Okay. Thank you, Rodney. Councillor Dubs. Yes. Kathy. Yes. And I vote yes as well. All right, thank you all. So, um, Councillor Dubs, if you have updates from City Council for us, sure. Um, yeah. So, um, good, uh, very good news for the commission that we have a new. We will have a new member as of Thursday. Um, Jenna Perna Elias, who's here with us today, and uh, yeah. I, so I interviewed. Uh, for, so I'm on the. In addition to this commission, I'm also on the committee uh, for City Services, um, and so. When people are appointed to committees and commissions, uh, we op we often have to interview them, and so I got I got the privilege to interview Jenna, and and um, then I gave a very positive recommendation to the city services, and they all agreed as well that that she's awesome, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that Jenna will be a great addition to our commission. Um, she has a very like deep and broad understanding of disability. Uh, need, you know, the needs of disabled people and, and how we can be doing better in Northampton and what we need to do to, to be better. And so I think she'll be a great addition to our commission. And um, and then, so then we'll also be having another new member soon, um, Sydney Mininger. I'm, I think that's how you say her name. I'm not sure exactly how you say her last name. Uh, Sydney Mining, Mininger. Um, I'll be interviewing her very soon as well. And so, um so Jenna will be approved on Thursday at our city council meeting, and then, and then, um, my report for Sydney will be the first Monday of, of June, <clears throat> and then that will, and then that will go to city council again for for you know final approval. So by July we should have uh, uh, Sydney as our as our ninth member of the commission, and then we'll be a full, a full commission. Um, yeah, so. Um, and then the only other news I have at the moment is that uh, I reported last month that I spoke in support of the Ryan Roads um, uh, accessible for all, accessible for all playground at their school, and since then it has been approved 
and has gotten the funding. So that's that's really happening now. So that's great news. Yeah. So I think that's all I have at the moment. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, okay. sorry. One more one more thing. This is a small thing, but the wheelchair lift that's being uh, built uh, at 41 Strong Ave. I, I remember we had talked to I I had reported about that before. That's just letting everyone know that's still happening. There was a minor uh, temporary. Um, they stopped construction for a little while because the Central Business Architecture Committee had to approve the the the, the addition to the building that they're that they're building. Uh, because I guess just in general, when you when you're building something, when you're adding an an addition to your building, you have to get approval by the city. So the city has approved the wheelchair lift, and, and there might be a few weeks delay. Um, we had said before that it would be a July 1st when it was done. Uh, it might just be a little, a few weeks after July 1st, but it's still, still on the right track. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Jenna, we're excited to have you as part of the commission soon. Thank you. Um, Great. So um, the next item on the agenda is the notice for nominations for chair and vice chair. So we were, Keith and Emma and I met and we were trying to remember um, last fall. I don't know if Keith, if you had a chance to look it up, but I, I, we thought that we were going to give notice in May, give everyone kind of a heads up that in June, uh, at our June meeting will be a time to nominate anyone for chair and vice chair. So be thinking of that now, if you would like to consider either of those roles for yourself or to nominate someone else, and then we'll vote um, in our July meeting for that. Um, any questions before I move on? All right. Um, so Keith has an update and a request for us about the MOD grant. Yes, thank you. So uh, as you know, February, we got awarded $95,000 to update the service desks or service windows and the um, doors at um, call City Hall campus. So City Hall, Municipal Building and Memorial Hall. Um, so the service desks are those desks that, um, you know, they're supposed to be accessible. Um, uh, and so that work for the accessible desk went on, uh, completed at city clerk's office. And then um, the veterans, uh, veterans services, which um, helps all of, most of Hampshire County veterans, um, that is near completion. Um, and then there's a little bit of work to do at retirement. Um, so that is no problem. Um, the automatic door operators for the city hall campus and then the senior center, um, we were waiting on the design um, and we got the design, um, but it's too late to go out to bid. Um, we wouldn't have enough time to get the bid and then do the work before the grant is due. And so I asked for an extension and they said, um, it's not worth doing the work to get an extension. So instead um, they said to reapply with the same, with uh, basically the same scope of work minus the fact that we did the service desks. And then um, you have a high, you know, just, update the narrative that we've got it and gotten it. And this is basically acting as an extension. Um, so if we get, oh, they've noticed or MOD is aware that there's not a lot of time from when they previously awarded to completion. So they're get, the window of application is sooner now. So we'll have a potentially Oct October or this award instead of February. And so we'll have that many more months to do the work. But the good news is we have the design um, and the architect was paid for out of the accessible um, parking fund. Um, so, uh, and the good news is we can actually add uh, two doors to this. So previously 
well, we're going to add the planning office and the hearing room door doors. So we'll, if we get the grant, we'll actually have more work um, done. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to be reapplying and, you know, like a favorable, you know, letter of recommendation from you all to pursue this application um, and this method of doing it. So I'm happy to, I do, I can send up some before and after um, photos or I can pull it up right now if you all want to see it. I don't know. I only have um, the city clerks right now. Um, uh, okay, sorry. I uh, all right. Can you all see the see the desk? Yes. So previously it was very short. Uh, it was not very wide. It didn't meet the, the width requirements and it didn't meet the depth requirements. Plus they had this thing in front of it. Um, so now we have this beautiful blue uh, widened desk um, that meets the depth and the width requirements. Um, and so um, I don't have the finished photos of veterans, but it's getting the basically the same treatment um, and then veterans as well. So, um, yeah, happy to answer the questions, but if not, I would love uh, someone to make a recommendation to write a letter of support. Great. Any any questions? <clears throat> Seems good to me. I, I don't. How do you? How do you all feel? If I'm hearing correctly, it sounds like it's the exact same thing that. <clears throat> excuse me, that we'd already approved, but it's now just kind of a different timeline. Correct. Okay. Yep. We're just taking off the desks that we did. And then gonna add two more doors. Yeah. So I Rodney, you agree too? I I'd be happy to make that recommendation that we write a love letter of approval for this phase of the grant process. Um do we have to take a vote on that or is that just uh I was just curious. Yeah, a motion in a second and the, okay. and the uh, approval will be great. I'll make a motion to approve the letter in support. Can second that. Um, so roll call vote, Emma. Yeah. Yes. Linda. Yes. Rodney. Rodney. <laughs> yes. Councillor Dubs? Yes. Kathy? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, thank you, Keith. Cool. Um, is that something, um, Keith, you and Emma and I can work on off offline the letter? Yep. All right, so um, the heart of the meeting, uh, Disability Pride Month, planning. We had three different groups that were meeting to talk about, talk about uh, potential events for July to um, celebrate Disability Pride Month. Um, a reality, a current reality um, going into these conversations is that we don't have funding for events from the city at this time. So yes, so that is that is where we are right now. Um, so I'm wondering um, 
Jeremy, if you'd be willing to talk about the first group, because that's a quick one, the first group that you were in about 41 strong and just share oh. with yeah, so um, I think um, that was that's an event that we decided or that might is it might be a little bit harder to schedule because we're not sure exactly when the wheelchair lift is going to be ready to go, and and um, so I'm not sure when it's exactly when a celebration would be yet at the moment. Um, still trying to make it. If everybody thinks we should do that, then I would be willing. To, to still try to make it happen, but I wasn't sure if that's something we would be able, we'd be able to go forward with at the, at the time. Um, did you have an opinion on that, or? Um, I think um, we had touched base. I I think it might be better that event. And just so, sorry, so everyone is clear. I realized I wasn't very clear. This is the one at Forty One Strong Avenue. We talked about um, kind of a celebratory party once the wheelchair lift goes in. Um, and I think that would be better done privately, like Jeremy and friends coordinating, um, and the disability commission gets invited to it, but to not have that be an event put on by the disability commission. So, um, I think that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to kind of update. But I'll I'll definitely keep everybody updated on when that is gonna if, when that happens. Awesome. So everybody will be invited. Awesome, great, thank you. Um, do you want to roll into the other group that you were a part of with? Sure, I'll, I think what I'll, I'll just introduce it a little bit and then de and then defer the rest to Kathy because Kathy. Um, I feel like is 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 the lead maybe the leader on this committee this subcommittee, if that's okay with if you don't mind me saying, <laughs> um, yeah. So this is for the informational event that um, we were talking about. We're thinking about having on Zoom um, because that would be the most accessible way for people to be able to access the meeting, um, a, a, a meeting where we could um, invite some speakers um, and talk about resources for dis for um, people who are disabled in, in Northampton. And um, so, but yeah, like an informational event, like an ed like to educate people on on, on uh, how they can reach out if they have issues about uh, disability related issues in Northampton. Uh, so, but yeah, but I'll give the, have, if Kathy doesn't mind, maybe right sharing on. your, do you mind sharing your screen? I'll share the notes we have. Awesome. Um, Keith, can you enable me as a, as a host for sharing? Yes, should be able to know. Thank you. So, um, yeah, this, sorry, these are the raw notes. I realized 10 minutes ago, I didn't clean them up. So we talked about a variety of topics that we might uh, wanna cover at this kind of event. And I think um, one of the formats we talked about was maybe having a panel discussion where people, we could invite various people, especially if it's on Zoom, um, to um, just basically talk a little bit about about the issues and then have an open discussion if we wanted. So some of the some of the ideas, some of the things we wanted to highlight, if possible, it's a long list, so it'll have to be pared down. Are um, about um, oh, and it, I just want to say it was uh, Jeremy and Marilyn Claire and I and Jacob who joined us also to generate some ideas. So you'll see the names here. Um, so. Uh, Jacob suggested Center for Human Development representative, um, someone to talk about CPAC, Special Ed Parents Action Group, All Out Adventures, um, David Fenton, who is also known as the adaptive equipment guy who um, collects and loans out adaptive equipment from um, his position at the jail, um, an advocate service, which is um, specific to children, um, sorry, students in the, in the public schools. Um, I thought about our very own Ben talking about Forbes Library and what it has to offer. Um, various people mentioned the Disability Law Center and a representative to talk about Mass Health. We also talked about accessible trails, um, the MAAB and what, what it does, um, the ADA transition plan. And Jeremy, I think, suggested that maybe Chris Palomas could come and talk about that. 
and um, again, dis disability law center and like where to go with specific questions. Like if you need accessible parking spot at your building, who do you call? So, you know, I think that list would have to be pared down. I don't know what the what the commission would like to see in terms of an event, but excuse me. <laughs> again, we talked about <clears throat> sorry a Zoom meeting. Um, that would be recorded so it had perpetual access. People could have perpetual access to it. And <clears throat> sorry, I'm sitting outside and it's, you know, spring. Um, possibly having um, Spanish subtitles or translation. <clears throat> and of course, making it entirely accessible. So th those are the thoughts that we had. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so let's, let's hear from the last group and then kind of have a conversation of what might make sense for, for the group for the summer. Does that sound okay? Um, so Linda, Emma, and I met, Emma or Linda, do either of you want to share our meandering process with the commission? Well, we couldn't find any place that we could actually meet. So yeah, and so we were we were originally talking about some kind of an event on the trail, a trail, potentially a rail trail, uh, potentially with. Uh, recumbent trikes or having a recumbent trike demonstration um so just to frame it so go ahead linda sorry to interrupt well i was talking more about what you were talking about the getting together remember yes and we couldn't we couldn't find a place yes so we we met and we started talking about the a trail event and um potential trike demonstration and imagining it with food and you know celebratory fun thing and um I got discouraged with no funding support for such an event um and the logistics of having a lot of people on a narrow rail trail and um, we, the conversation led to um, potentially meeting outside, maybe kind of in a picnic-like atmosphere, but again, no money for food. Um, so we were thinking, oh, look park or Child Park, Child's Park, um, Forbes Library outside, um, potentially uh, Pulaski Park came up at some point. Uh, bathroom facilities are a concern and entrance fee at Look Park is a concern. Um, so, and, and then no funding to be able to buy food to invite the public and have people come and have it be a fun celebratory event. So we ended up talking about, well, what if the Disability Commission got together socially this summer and not inviting the public and then we can somehow figure out some snacks to bring or you know people could volunteer to bring stuff or that kind of thing to have it be a um, low or no cost thing where we are getting to know each other and connecting outside of um, the disability commission kind of laying a good foundation to then be able to hopefully next year do something where we invite the public and um, open it up to a broader community. Um, location is still a, a question. Um, so 
indoors, potentially at the senior center. Then there's COVID concern. Um, so that would, you know, a, an outdoor space with facilities is still um, something to be considered. So that's where our group, Emma, do you want to add anything? To... <laughs> oh, sorry, you're on mute right now. Sorry, <laughs> I'm now I, I feel like you very meticulously covered the journey of our conversation. <laughs> Um, so one thought I've been having is just to kind of start the conversation out and get feedback just to get us started, um, is if we wanted to hold the, um, informational resource educational, um, event on zoom and, we could split up the work and, you know, finding speakers, that kind of thing, so that we're um, not all meeting as a group and not having conversations outside of the meeting so we don't violate open meeting law, but we could, you know, divvy up the work to make that organization happen um, so there are more, more people involved in that to, to move it along and to also do a, a small gathering just for the disability commission um uh, as a a social you know a small social event that is not during our our meeting time but at another time whether it's during the week or on the weekend we could figure out um you know a, a, a time that works for everybody um if if everyone is interested in in doing that um and then we would still hold our July meeting at its regular time on Zoom. So those two events um, could be at other times. So if anyone wants to piggyback or adapt or yay or nay or you know add into that, that'd be great. And Jenna, feel free to to add in. I know you're not officially on the commission, but you're welcome to chime in as you will be in July. Thanks. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't here for the other planning, but I think what you just proposed sounds good considering the resources that the committee has right now. Thanks for adding those thoughts. Anyone else? I think it sounds good too. I'm I, I'm ready to put in the work to to make it happen and excited about it. I like having the combination of those two events as part of our celebration for the month. Yeah. Rodney, what what do you think? I'm you like okay. Thanks. Linda, what do you think? Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Do you think we would we invite anyone to the outdoor event, like friends or anything like that? Or is it just or mm -hmm. that's just an idea? But I guess we'd have to have more food if we did that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if we if it were people we knew and, and you know not necessarily the public but like if you wanted to bring someone or something is that a possibility yeah what what do folks think <clears throat> i mean i i think the um our thinking about it linda and emma and i thinking about it was a uh, chance for us to get to know each other mm -hmm. outside of business city disability commission business 
um, and bringing a, a friend or a partner or a spouse seems like it would, it, I mean, that doesn't feel like that would preclude us from getting to know each other and having conversations. Um, but I'm curious what other people think about that, if that feels like it's getting too big or, I mean, I think it could be. I think the plus ones promote access, so I'm for it. Then we could invite Ben. What was that? Say it again. Oh, sorry. I said then we could invite Ben. <laughs> ben, our honorary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben put in a comment. Oh, yeah. Ben says, I think you may have, I think you have to assume folks. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think you have to assume folks may show up if is planned during a public meeting. Yes, so this would not be a public meeting. The public would not be invited. This would not be um, an official uh, meeting of any kind. So um, I looked up open meeting law and it, as long as we do not uh, discuss public disability commission uh, content, then it does not violate open meeting law. So we would all have to be very clear on that beforehand and abide by that and not, you know, leak into any kind of disability commission conversation. So it would be purely social. <laughs> this would be separate from the Zoom call, correct? Yes. The Zoom meeting, yeah. I'm sorry, Emma, you were going to say something when I um I'm still just thinking about location and like logistics like location like do we have to pay anything to reserve a spot somewhere do we have like if we invite more people like everyone has a plus one that does mean like yeah. food if we're having food like can people like personally swing those costs i guess i don't want to be a party pooper but i think it should should just be us so we can get to know each other because then we have to meet the other people you know <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Um, I absolutely understand your point, Linda, and 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 agree. And in terms of Jenna said something, if I understood you correctly, Jenna, that it increases access by having a plus one, and so um. Oh. I fall into that category depending on the terrain. Um, if I'm not able to navigate on my own in my wheelchair, then if my husband comes, he can help me get to wherever the, the meeting is. So it kind of um, can lower stress and increase enjoyment. Um, so that, I think is a factor um, as well. And it, I mean, it could be that, you know, people who want to bring a partner can do so. And if you're good to go and your partner doesn't want to come or <laughs> your friend doesn't want to come, um, then, you know, then, then you come solo. I mean, we could, what, what do you think of that, Linda? Does that, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so we will be nine commission members um, as of July, 
And of course, Keith, you're welcome to join. And Ben, we'd love to have you as well, um, if you're available. Um, so, Emma, what do you think about, and, and Linda, the three of us um, meeting again to try to figure out a space that might work better than others there is we we unless anyone here has an idea or you know uh or can send an email to to me or to to keep um after the meeting if you think of a space that is just so incredibly accessible and it's outside and it's beautiful and easy to get to and there are bathrooms <laughs> um that would be great but the three of us hadn't thought of that yet um so but we can kind of keep um amy do you mind yeah. if i ask um i think that you had mentioned to me in a previous conversation that possibly if we had it at pulaski park um they could open the bathrooms at one of the nearby municipal buildings Is that yeah true? I, I think that could be an option if we uh, talk to folks. Yep. If people like the idea of Pulaski Park, but if, if not, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. There's that, that area with tables. So all mobility devices can get there. Um, and then a stream's nearby at least. Um, so it's a, a busier part of the city. It's not off in a nook somewhere. Right, um, yeah, there'd be other people from the public like hanging out and stuff probably, but. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but I'm I'm cognizant of time. And so I'm wondering if, um, can we, hmm. Would it violate open meeting law, Keith, to have people uh, or to have a, a emails about a date for a, an event because this is not a disability commission meeting? Um, that's tricky. I mean, you can talk about um, scheduling. Um, it's not a violation of open meeting law. Um, you just can't opine about things that are not the schedule, you know. Yeah. Um, so that is that is the distinction. Yeah. So no opinions. No. Right. Okay. But we could talk about <laughs> dates and times. Correct. Well, sorry, Amy. I'm wondering if it's worth picking a date and time now and with like you and i and linda can figure out the details of where in our subcommittee meeting okay i didn't know i'm cognizant of the time so i'm because we have to talk about the um the resources educational okay event. so that was why i was hoping we could move on um unless people know their schedules really quickly. Um, I don't personally have any plans yet in July, you know, I'm not, no vacation plans or anything like that. So I feel like I would be open to almost any date we pick. Um, and do folks want to, do a weekend so that it doesn't interfere with Monday through Friday work. How about we do thumbs up or thumbs down or sideways so we get everyone <laughs> input. So weekend, yeah, preferring, you know, pref or, or available on a weekend and available on a weekday not during the 
nine to five, like a lunchtime, Monday through Friday. Yes or no, or maybe to that. Oh. And okay, see, so, and uh, like an evening, weekday evening. Yeah. I could do that, but it, it could be limited depending on the date that we pick because of various reasons, like council meetings and things like that. But uh, but I could try to make it on, on an evening. Okay. I, um, Emma, I think I think we need to do a survey. <laughs> like a doodle, we could do like a doodle poll. You yeah. guys ever do that? Yeah, yeah. So let me let uh, Emma, Linda, and I will work on on that um, <coughs> to figure out day and time that could could work for everyone. Um, okay, and we'll also uh, talk about location and bring that back in our June meeting. Is that okay with everyone to move on? Okay, awesome. So, um, Kathy, can you help us with the next phase? <laughs> with the, I mean, sorry, the next project, the resources, educational sure. Zoom event. Sure, well, why don't I um, share my screen again? I mean, I think, and Jeremy, uh, jump in here, and I think Jacob might be joining us. So um, to me, I think one of the, obviously selecting a date would be important, but also just narrowing down, you know, what topics the commission is most interested in presenting, you know, maybe five or six of them or something, and then we could mm -hmm. go out and see if people are available to mm -hmm. come in and be a part of this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you're thinking um, mm -hmm. a, a panel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we were Jeremy. I think you were the person who came up with the brilliant panel idea. So maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, it's like just like a like an like having multiple speakers um, speaking on different topics, and then and then after they speak, after each person speaks, mm -hmm. we can ask them ask them questions if we want to, um, something like that. Um, and there, there are some people, some names on this list. I think that I, I could reach out to, and 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 probably I, I would be happy to reach out to Tom Murphy from the Disability Law Center. He was one person that I thought, or I thought it might be helpful because, um, when there, when there are, when things happen in town, um, and we don't have someone to reach to, we don't know, we don't know who to contact. Um, if, um, Tom Murphy, I feel like he would be able to help out talking about like what what the disability law center does and how they can you know be helpful to people in in northampton i feel like he would be willing to do that he was a lot of he did a lot of work on the the 41 strong Ave wheelchair lift that we got done so i think that he would be good and then chris palamas is the author of the ada transition plan and he's also a former chair of the disability commission um so i think that he would be a great speaker So each speaker having 10-ish minutes to speak? Yeah, I think, did we talk, I think we talked about how long, did, did we, Kathy? I think we how talked long? about, yeah, each person having 10 to 15 minutes and then having it opened up for questions at the end, like maybe a two-hour event, is that what we were thinking, I, I think? Yeah, that's that sounds about right. I wonder if it'd be useful if we just went down the list and took a straw poll here to see what people are most interested in in terms of topics. Mm -hmm. Does that seem like a way to go, Amy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I can't see everybody because I have my screen open. So maybe um, shall I just read them and people could do the thumbs up if they're interested in it? Yes, that sounds good. Okay. So um, Center for Human Development, finding out about what they do. Um, Jacob said they had adaptive mm -hmm. sports events. How many people are interested in Center for Human Development? They did like adaptive basketball and some other things. Mm -hmm. I I reached out to the woman who runs the program. Her husband uses a chair and he runs the um, mm -hmm. adaptive sled hockey. I don't know. They seem like 
they I'm sure they'd be interested in you know speaking for 10 minutes or something just before we do the vote can we just get a, a you know 30 second blurb on each one so we you know if we're if we're just each you know if we're picking five or oh sorry I don't know why that came to my head how many okay. are how many are we ultimately picking for the panel I was thinking six, I think, right? Because if we're, I'm oh, sorry, did I interrupt you, Jeremy? Oh, no, actually, I was just going to ask you. So what were you going to say? Sorry, I cut you off. Well, if you're thinking 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes per person, if we're thinking 10 minutes per person, let's say, and we had six people, that would be the first hour, and then we could have the second half hour or hour for discussion and questions. Does that make sense? Okay. So could we go through each one and get a short blurb and then people can be thinking about which six they want to vote for? How's can that? I can I interject really quick that 10 minutes sounds like a long time to me. I'm just it, I'm just anxious about that. I just want to put it out there for discussion. I'm not saying yet yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. It just feels like asking someone to talk for 10 minutes about their program. I don't know, it sounds like a lot. But maybe I'm wrong. I had a similar thought, Jacob. I had the same exact thought. Yeah. You think five minutes is, makes sense? Yeah. So then, can I just ask, going back to the question, then how many? Well, maybe we should go through and see see what we like, and then decide how many. Maybe that's the way to go. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I wonder if. Jacob wants to do his his suggestions because he probably knows more about them than the rest of us do. Okay, my my daughter's gonna join for this little bit. This little bit. Come here, Jeff. Go for it. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So CHD that uh, Jessica Levine, I have her contact info. She's great. Um CPAC is the special ed parents action mm -hmm. committee. I'm just on their email and there's a bunch of smart parents of special of special education students. Um, I look, I, I read their email exchanges and learn a lot from them. I'm sure somebody, a representative might be interested in speaking. Everyone knows a lot of adventures. Um, Kathy, you, I think you know more about David Fenton than I do. We, I think we both mentioned him. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Um, David Fenton, as I mentioned, he um, works um, up at the jail and he, has taken it on himself to basically collect adaptive equipment from people who are no longer using it and distribute it for free to people who need it. So if you need something, wheelchair, um, toilet seat, et cetera, et cetera, you know, you can call him and see what he has and he might have something and he'll bring it out to you. Is he part of the triad program? I, is that, I think somebody told me that he was. Okay. Yes. And then the only other one that I said was an advocate service. So when we were just moving here and we had an IP, we um, hired mm -hmm. this woman who's a consultant and can join your IEP. Um, for anyone who hasn't been in school for a long time, that's the individual education program. Individualized education program. Anyway, it's sort of your, as a special ed student, your rights within the school and your plan and everything. And this woman can go to your IEP and help represent you. Um, so, and I have her contact info. So it's another angle of, from a parent's perspective, but that's what I got. Great. Um, my suggestions were that um, Ben come and talk to us about the um, the resources available through Forbes Library, um, the accessible resources. Disability Law Center, I actually don't know much about, but I've heard so much about it from uh, Jacob Ben and Jeremy. I added that. So maybe Jeremy can speak mm -hmm. to that. And then I think someone else had mentioned Mass Health earlier, maybe Jacob, just you know, talking, talking about what the um, insurance options might be available to people. Yeah, and um, um I was thinking that it talking about the accessible trails and, and the locations of them, also about the current bill to support accessible trails um, and because there is a vote on that coming soon. Um, and so that might be good for us to to talk about. Um, perhaps we could, um, Amy, do you think, do you know who, who we might wanna ask to speak about that? Like, um, 
Oh, I guess Meg Bandera, right? We could we could invite her. Yeah, Meg would be great. Meg would be the one to ask. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the M M A A B U, the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board. I was as as we were having this conversation, I was realizing that I don't actually know anybody. Like you know, I don't have any contacts from that because I've always the 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 contact I've had with the, with them was through Tom Murphy at the Disability Law Center. So, um, but I could contact the M A A B and see if someone be, would be willing to come to our event and um and and speak about about them because I, they're a really helpful resource to have in Massachusetts. Um, we, it, they could educate us on on the the co the the access codes that that um the rule you know the rules for accessibility for for businesses and buildings um so that when we find ourselves in in a, in, a, in, a, in in a place that's not accessible we can we will have the knowledge mm -hmm. to you know we will we'll, we'll have the knowledge that they a place might be in violation of a, of an MAAB code so that's that's important knowledge to have um so i don't know for sure that they'd be able to come but i feel like that would be a good at least it'd be good to reach out to them and see if they're if someone someone is able to do that. And then the ADA transition plan, um, I've, I've talked about that a, a, a lot before, but um, especially I feel like it's a good idea to, to, to talk about now because the city council has re recently, uh, we made a resolution in support of the ADA transition plan. So I think the more we speak about it and educate people about it, um, the better we are mm -hmm. as a city. I think it'll be, it'll be good for all of us. And hopefully, Chris Palamas might be able to speak. So, and it looks like Marilyn's um, suggestions were already incorporated. Mm -hmm. So, I think that leaves us eleven topics. And you know, I don't know if the disability commission members have any others they might want to add to that. But if we kept it to around like ten or eleven, let's say we identified ten or eleven um, prospects. I'm sure they wouldn't all be available either. So, you know, we could even rather rather than voting, just see who who uh, is available to come do it. I I think that sounds great, Kathy. Um, yeah, that sounds great. Because then it's then it's getting more information about what's in the community and what's available, and getting little snippets so that people can follow up with the various organizations or agencies. Um, as they need or want to. Um, so I guess. Thoughts? Sorry, Kathy. Go ahead. Sorry. I just, anyone else have thoughts on having, uh, you know, 10 or, or inviting all 11 and seeing who's able to make it? I would, can I just mm -hmm. add one thing? Um, even if they can't make it, maybe there's an opportunity to record a video that you can add to the Zoom at the end or something. So we're sort of collecting a bunch of resources. Great idea. So Kathy, uh, where from here do you want people right now to say, oh, I'll contact this person, or do you want to decide a date, um, time? To figure out a date and time before we contact people so we know that it fits into their schedule or that they can do the right. alternative Jacob suggested. Right. So what do we think? <laughs> Did your group look at potential dates? We did not. Uh, what about an evening time? Oh yeah, we did talk about that, um, Kathy. And we said we said we we did mention that evening might be better, like after people are out of work, like six o'clock or something like that. Seven. I don't know. We probably get better attendance if we were in the evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. uh is seven too late, or is mm -hmm. that reasonable? 
Oh, if it's going for two hours? Mm -hmm. oh. An hour and a half or two. Okay. Maybe an hour and a half might be more like palatable. Yeah. <laughs> hour and a half is more palatable. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 90 minutes. Um, so if we kept presentations to an hour and then questions to half an hour and wrapped up. Mm -hmm. um, so it is six to 7.30 reasonable? I'm not. Um, Sounds good to me. That sounds good to me. Yeah, very good. Thumbs up from Jenna. Sorry, I'm not seeing everybody right now. <laughs> Thumbs up from Linda. Ooh. Emma. Okay. So so and then what about a date? So six to seven thirty PM. I'm gonna say not on a Friday night. <laughs> Did you have a, a a week in mind earlier in July, later in July? I think we should skip the first week of July, given the holiday in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, we already have a meeting the second week of July on Tuesday, right? So for all of us, that takes up some time that week. Mm -hmm. And if we want to look at the third week, you know, middle of the week. I, I'm just talking just for, with ideas. Anyone else should feel free to jump in. I think that makes sense. The third week sounds good. Um, the only night that I, I wouldn't be able to do a Wednesday night. I can't either. I can't do the third Wednesday either. All right. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, we could, I mean... You could look at the tenth, even though we have a meeting the day before, or you know, twenty fourth, or somewhere in there. Um, I suggest the eleventh or the sixteenth. Mm -hmm. The eleventh, the eleventh, because hopefully we'll all be in town for July 9th for our meeting, July. and then so it's kind of you know, right around that time gives a little break on the 10th before we, so it'd be a, you know, a heavier disability mm -hmm. commission week. Um, but then we're hopefully all here and able to join mm -hmm. and support it. Um, mm -hmm. Or if we want a little more time the Tuesday, the 16th, um, I will have. I would have to confirm before I could, uh, say yes about the eleventh because it's a Thursday, so mm -hmm. there might be a council meeting that night, but there might not be because we only have one per month in July. Uh, we only have one meeting per month, so I, I would have to double check. So I might be able to do the eleventh, but it might be safer to just to gotcha. choose the six the sixteenth. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thanks. How does the 16th work for other people? <laughs> any 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 no's to July 16th, 6 to 7:30 for the Are we calling it a resource fair? That's a good that's a good good name, yeah. <laughs> Did you just come up with that now? I feel oh, like God. someone else said it. That's good. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think that's original. <laughs> <on my part. laughs> oh, and I just wanted to mention, uh, Ben has said that he's happy to participate. So we have one speaker confirmed. Woo, thank you, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the Zoom resource fair, July 16th from 6 to 7.30. Um, So, Kathy, Jeremy, and I don't know if 
Jacob might have, oh, Jacob, sorry, you, <laughs> you, you moved corners. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you three want to proceed from here with contacting the 11, sorry, now 10, because Ben has confirmed, um, the 10 potential other speakers? Mm -hmm. Do you three want to split it up? Do you want help from other people on the commission? I feel like we could split it up. I don't know if we want to do it now or not. I, I know. I feel like I know there's a few names on that list that I would choose now. I could choose now. I could. I know that I could definitely contact Tom Murphy and Chris Palamas um, and the MAAB. So I could definitely do those ones. Can I have screen sharing back so I can open it up and write who's contacting who on the form? Thank you. Okay, so Ben is a yes. Thank you, Ben. All right, and Jeremy, you said you were contacting Tom? Uh, Tom, yep. And yeah. MAAB. Mm -hmm. uh, I can contact Meg Bandara as well from the Accessible Trails. Okay. And there was one more that I said a second ago, but now I'm forgetting. Chris, Chris Palamas? Yes, Chris Palamas, yeah. I can do more too if, if, if necessary. That's just off the top of my head, the ones that I'm sure I can do. I can I can do David Fenton. Um, Jacob, I don't know if you want to do. I don't know what you'd like to do. Um, yeah, I'll do Jessica Levine is this the CHD contact. Okay. And then I have the name of my um, advocate, which I'll find and and ask that I'll send it to you once I get figure out. It's it's lost in my email somewhere. It's been a few okay. years. Okay. And were there any others on there? We can't see your. I don't know if you were trying to share your screen, Kathy, or not. I thought I was sharing my screen, but maybe I I failed. We don't see it yet. I can't even find you guys. So <laughs> here we are. All right, here we are. So share screen. Do you see everything on my screen now? Yeah, we see it all. Yeah. yeah. You look. It says you look very nice, and you're pretty dressed today. I see that. Well, <laughs> let me see. Here we go. Okay, there we are. Um, oh, and right. I can email the CPAC. Okay. Gang. Oh, and I, I don't know, I, I feel like people do know Karen Foster. Maybe, Amy, do you want to contact Karen? Don't you know her? From I'd be happy to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who's left? Um, I can see what I can find out about insurance um, information. So, about mass health. Mm -hmm. So I think that, does that cover everything? I think that covers everything. I think so. Yeah, great. Nice. Okay. I'm going to put the date here just so we don't forget. Just so I don't forget, sorry. So who amongst us has the, uh, the technical know-how to kind of coordinate the, the meeting? Affair. Oh, I'd be happy to host it if we're doing it on Zoom. Is that is that we're just it's just a regular Zoom meeting? Um, I as long as there's nothing involved that I I feel like I could do it. I don't see why not. Okay. Yeah, if we're, we're not doing breakout rooms, we're I mean it's going to be just a straightforward. Everyone jump mm. on and introduce so. So just making sure the format is worked out, the details. So is there an introduction? Mm -hmm. Who's doing the introduction? Um, who's going to be, you know, the order of the speakers and at least introducing them or letting them know it's their turn, you know, letting them know time, just kind of those details. Is that um, something? Uh, you're saying... Jeremy's going to host on Zoom. If oh, I was just a, suggesting that. I don't really know. That. I mean, if it's going to be a disability commission meeting, uh, I think I should host. Oh, so you, you city should Zoom. 
and it's if it's going to be open to the public, then we need to post it and all that kind of good stuff. So, okay, mm-hmm. I just didn't realize that, but yeah, that makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. So, so then I think it's at least 48 hours, but it'd be nice to have it posted, um, you know, a few weeks ahead of time on the on the website, Keith. Um, so we should have um, an agenda for the meeting. So once we know who's able to attend, then uh, creating an agenda, um, intro, who's speaking, maybe a tiny blurb about their, or at least the name of where they're from, uh, contact information, um, Q&A, some of us might uh, we might think about preparing some questions so that if no one in the audience has questions, we can fill in that space so it's not, you know, silence so that there can be some robust conversation. Uh, thank you, Ben. Ben just posted Forbes Library can help promote it. If you would like, the Senior Center may also be able to help. Great idea. Um, so, so team, team Zoom. <laughs> so uh, I guess my question to you is, do you all want to hold that work of creating, you know, reaching out, finding the people and then creating an agenda and getting it to Keith? Or what kind of support would you like in that process? Um, how do you feel, Kathy? And I feel like we can do it, but I'm happy to have anybody who wants to help help. Great. So, um, we just have to be cognizant of the open meeting laws. So mm-hmm. that's the the thing to keep in mind as we move forward. Um, maybe we could try to have that ready by the next meeting. We'll try to have the agenda figured out so we can like discuss it and make sure everybody's happy with it at the June meeting. That's great. And then um, flyers, we want to post some flyers around. Um, We can ask the city to post on social media, senior center, Forbes library, but um, what do folks think about um, creating a flyer to put some around town for people. Great idea. I'd be happy to hang some up in the areas that I'm able to get to. Yeah. I'd be happy to make the flyer if that's cool. That's cool. Awesome. Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> Jumping right in with work. Yeah. I did make the flyer last year for your event. Oh <laughs> yeah. That was an that's an excellent flyer, by the way. <laughs> we were we were very appreciative. <laughs> yeah, I can help hang some or pass them out also. Make my kids do it. <laughs> um, and it'd be great to get in the school system, like Kathy, you had suggested last month, if we can not us pay for photocopies to go out to every kid, but if we can get it somehow electronically. Uh-huh. We'd have to do that really fast, right? Because the schools close. I don't know what day the last day of school is for public, but June eighteenth, I think. June what? Eighteenth. Eighteenth. Mm-hmm. It would have to be translated also. Let me find out if it's possible. Okay. We can also send it to the chamber, and they'll put it in their newsletter. Mm-hmm. Mm, good idea. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to help in any way. And so there can be three commissioners meeting, um, so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm happy to, to help and, and Mm -hmm. to join a meeting or, um, you know, give, give me some work to follow up on or whatever, whatever is needed to make it happen. 
Cool. Great. Um, great. Anything else? Thank you for that, all that conversation and planning. All right. Um, so the updates from DPW, uh, given that it's 518, I'm not going to read through. I hope you all saw the email that Keith forwarded with the, the list of all the sidewalk repairs for this year that are happening. Um, if you didn't see that, please let uh, Keith or myself know that and we can resend it to you. So it's a, a, a thorough list of all the things that are getting repaired um, or redone entirely this summer. Um, we wanted to go back to Linda brought up last month a question about meeting online versus in person. And so we just wanted to um, revisit that conversation. Can, uh, sorry, going back. Jacob, can you send to the public? Mm -hmm. um, like, can I get a copy? Yes. Yep. It can be distributed mm -hmm. far and wide. Um, we don't have a, a listserv of people, so I, I will send it to you. Um, no, yeah. And you can share it with, you know, with any folks that, you know, who would be interested. Um, sorry. Um, so, so online versus um, in-person meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start the conversation and then I'd love for their thoughts, but to, to get it going, um, in-person uh, being mm -hmm. human would be, you know, in-person meetings are fantastic. And I think we all miss that and we all gain a lot from being in person together. And mm -hmm. there are health concerns about meeting in person that are um, quite real for, for many of us. Um, so I, I feel hesitant to say, oh yes, let's transition to in-person meetings and just you know go forward that way um so i yeah i'm also concerned about the technology of trying to make in-person meetings hybrid um without uh the, the proper technology to do that um and concerned about translation services. Um, I know, Rodney, you use the closed captioning and that works really well. Uh, so uh, in-person can be trickier perhaps if some people are wearing a mask. Um, so it's all sorts of different realities that make Zoom easy. It's a good, good thought. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for. Awesome. Thank you for... <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Rodney. Um, other other thoughts on how to proceed or ideas of how to proceed? Yeah, Jeremy. Um. Yeah. I. I agree with pretty much with everything you said i think that um the only i guess in my opinion the only like realistic way to have at in-person meetings would be to have the option to have hybrid also because so I, I personally just feel like not having the the option of 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 hybrid it's it, it it's it's especially because we're the disability commission that's not accessible and i i wouldn't be i guess i wouldn't be able to support that but I would definitely support a hybrid, hybrid meeting if it were possible, te technologically possible, then definitely, I think that would be the, the route to go. Thank you. Uh, 
other thoughts? Um, ben has a comment here, if you want to read that, Amy. Yeah, so Ben says, we have some book discussion groups that are hybrid here at Forbes and neither the organizers or participants know anything about the technology. We just set it up for them before they begin and take it down after. My understanding is that it generally works well. Thank you, Ben. Um, Again, yeah, I guess I would just add that if we if we can figure it out, like if, if that if that something like that would work, I think then then yes, I would I think that it would be great to be in person again if we, or has, have that as an option because, like you said, it's great to have the human interaction in in person. So I feel like yeah, we should do it if we can, mm -hmm. if we can if we can make it hybrid also. It's called a meeting owl, according to Ben. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, my family might be loud for a second. <laughs> um, I haven't tried getting to the library in my wheelchair um, on the sidewalks. And I'm curious how the knowing that the sidewalks in town aren't great, I'm curious how the sidewalks are um, getting to the library and then getting inside the library. So that's... Um, oh yeah, go ahead, Ben. I would love to hear um, from anyone who has made the trip recently. Um, but I can say that the Historically, for the last few years, the big problem has been the stretch of sidewalk in front of the um, the old church there. Um, Renaissance Hub, that's going to be think, a Renaissance Hub. Yes. That's like, it's awful. The sidewalks are so dangerous right there. Yeah. Um, we have been assured that work is going to happen and that they will be improved. Um, but that has been the difficult bit for sure. I would I would back up what Ben just said. Like the sidewalks in, in front of that in that area are really really bad. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I was in a manual, I was once on on my manual wheelchair on that sidewalk, and two people had to help me over the sidewalks, like to like get on both sides of me to make sure I didn't fall over. That's how bad it is there. Yeah. Um, but having said that, the accessibility at Forbes Library itself, I think, is excellent. Like I, like once you get to that, get once you get to the library. I feel like it's very safe. Would you agree, Ben? I I certainly hope so. We are yeah. trying to, to make that true. And I do want to share if anyone remembers our old handicap lift, um, the little one that was in the portico. It's now been many, many years, but I know those bad experience can mm -hmm. um, stick in people's minds. It has been replaced with a full elevator. Yes, the elevator I've used, I've used in the, elevator, the portico yeah. is now just is capable or perhaps more capable than the elevator that is inside the building to get from one floor to another. So um, that is a, a big improvement. Yeah, I can attest that both elevators work very well. So I've yeah, never had any problems. Is the newer elevator large enough to fit multiple folks in mobility devices at once? It depends on the mobility device. Um, the only complaint I have ever heard was um, from someone who was using a scooter and a fairly large scooter because it didn't have enough room to comfortably turn around without making a many, many point turn. Um, but I've seen a lot of different mobility devices and I'm sure there are other ones that would be um, uncomfortably large for that space. But the more common ones, um, are, are fine. It gets a lot of use. I haven't heard many complaints about it. Thank you. And just to speak to some of the stuff Jeremy spoke to, um, I've heard res like residents, I live in a, like a fair housing apartment building, and I've heard many people speak to how hard it is for them to get to the library. 
someday that will all be fixed. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Um, so I, I guess I propose for now that we remain uh, on online, our meetings online, and we kind of keep this conversation alive as we can kind of figure out the space and the technology and becoming hybrid and a, a space that is um, accessible to get to um, for everyone. So given that it is almost 5.30, I think I'd like, unless there are other comments brewing, I'd like to um, wrap up this conversation and revisit as, as needed. Okay. She's uh, looking for a motion. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Oh, well. Uh, oh, no. Not quite yet. Other, any other business not anticipated. Keith's ready. <laughs> okay. No other business. All right. I'll have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And Rodney, I thought I heard you. Were you seconding? Thank you. Second. Thank you, Rodney. All right. Thank you all so much for the mm -hmm. conversation and staying engaged this uh -huh. evening. Sticking Thank with you. Me. Thanks, with everybody. Have a, have a good night. Okay.